I want to introduce a concept that is speciesism. Of course, we have heard of racism, we've heard of sexism. Speciesism is the assumption of human superiority leading to non-human animal exploitation, abuse, suffering, and death. Tonight is about food, food justice. And there's a lot of amazing, powerful issues in food justice. Uh, and the one I think we want to focus on tonight is justice for the animals, the animals that are involved in the food industry, uh, the animals that suffer um, for meat, dairy, and eggs. As we're going through all the rest of the speakers and into the Q&A, uh, you know, think about the concept of speciesism and how we as individuals, as uh, a society, as a community, can reduce the um, instances and uh, the effects of speciesism. What I have been doing extensive research in and what I wrote my book in is alternative animal agriculture. And when I say alternative animal agriculture, I'm talking about all those labels that we're seeing, like certified humane and sustainable, things like this. We're seeing it more and more, not only at Whole Foods, but at places like Walmart and all kinds of places we're seeing these labels now. Oftentimes, what it is is a smaller, scale of farming or a smaller amount of animals, not necessarily, uh, but the differences between uh, commercial, conventional, and these alternative labels is unfortunately very small, very little difference. There are inherent cruelties um, that just cannot be circumscribed with a label. Things like mutilation of their bodies, of these animals' bodies, separation of families, um, emotional trauma, and I'm going to get into a little bit of that specifically. The well-being of the animal is going to be compromised to produce a profitable product, no matter how humane the operation even would want to be. There are inherent cruelties. So I live in Sonoma County, California. It's about an hour north of San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge. And there is a ton of this alternative animal agriculture going on, and especially with dairy, and that's what I want to focus in on. So when you're driving around my county, these are the kinds of things you see. You see certified humane and organic and environmentally certified. But then if you get a little closer into the farm and you actually go onto the farm, we'll talk about what the reality is. So this is what we want to believe is happening, right? On the left here, we want to believe these are staying with the mothers and they're out in the grass and the sunshine, no. This is not the reality. The reality is on the right. Um, these mama cows are kept pregnant, of course, just like any mammal. Uh, they only lactate when pregnant. Uh, and the babies are taken away soon, if not immediately after birth. You can see this little uh, girl, she still has her birth fluid on her. She's wet with her birth fluid. She's been taken away so soon. And I know this is a female because she is being put into a calf hutch. There are these doghouse-like plastic um, houses do uh, called um, calf hutches. And uh, when you go on to the farm, this is very near my house over in, uh, out on Stony Point, about 15 minutes away from me. And these, there's just rows and rows and rows of these calf hutches. These are newborn babies that have been ripped from their mothers. All a newborn baby wants is to be protected, be loved. They're frightened, they're alone when they're taken away from their mothers. The mothers will cry for their babies, uh, uh, wanting to you know, just break down stalls trying to get to their babies. It's heartbreaking and it is, no matter the label, all dairy production. So these are some of the pictures I've taken. I've gone out to these places. I, I've gone on to the farms. You often see cows in muck and manure. There's a little calf, if you can see, down to the right of that whatever trough is. And that's probably a male. He is not being taken to the calf hutches. He's awaiting a transport truck to be killed for veal or to be raised for beef for slaughter. Um, the males are a byproduct of the dairy industry and they go to slaughter. These are again some pictures I've taken over here. It's hard to tell, but this mama cow, she had a swollen back leg that she was limping on. It was very painful for her to walk. You see a lot of injuries. This is on an organic farm. And over here on the right, this is of advanced stages of mastitis. Mastitis is an infection of the udder that the cows get frequently in dairy production. In conventional dairy production, what they do is they give the cows antibiotics, medications to clear up the mastitis. What we're seeing now is on organic farms, they are not, they, they would have to take her out of production and not sell her milk 
They wouldn't make a profit on her to be able to give her the antibiotics to clear up these infections. So when I was researching for the book, I had veterinarians confide in me that they were seeing cows in, with the worst stages of, of mastitis, like the worst cases of mastitis in a severe pain at milking on the organic farms because they're not giving them the medications they need. So these labels, it can be even worse. Very little time, so I'm gonna switch gears here and I wanna talk turkey because <laughs> we are coming up on the holidays and uh, turkeys are so amazing. Look at this beautiful bird. It's incredible. So all the skin around their uh, face, it's called the snood and waddle. Um, do you know that this changes color? It's incredible. When they're uh, more subdued and more relaxed, it goes into more blues. And then if something is happening, like someone's approaching the barns or some, you know, there's some agitation or something, it can turn red and they st start getting very red. It's just amazing. It's like nature's mood ring. Uh, incredible, just incredible. Um, but unfortunately, um, it is really a holiday holocaust coming up. 46 million turkeys, Thanksgiving alone, and of course, many more for Christmas. Turkeys suffer horribly. They're packed into these long windowless warehouses, much like how we raise chickens for meat. They're in their own waste. The ammonia buildup is horrible. It burns their sensitive nostrils and throat. They can have respiratory issues. It's miserable, an absolutely miserable short life. They've been bred to grow so fast so heavy um, that they become so heavy sometimes their bones are too weak for it to carry their own weight they'll break their bones um, they're de-beaked they're detoed this is something that many people don't know about in the turkey industry that's specific to the turkey industry is that they use a method called detoing where they cut off uh, the first one or two digits of their foot of their toes the reason for this is they're cutting off their talons now when a bird is overstressed, overcrowded, has been treated, you know, cruelly, is scared, they're going to use their talons to defend themselves, okay? You never see this on a sanctuary. You never see this if a turkey is well cared for and loved you know, and has plenty of space and all of that at a sanctuary. You wouldn't see this, but because of the conditions, they use their talons to defend themselves. And instead of giving them the space they need, instead of giving them kindness and love, they cut their toes off so that the talons can't be used. It's horrible, um, brutal. And this is for you know, any label that you see, um, they can do this. So they're violently handled, carried um, you know, upside down to the transport trucks, thrown in there, uh, travel without food or water, and in all kinds of weather um, to the slaughterhouse, of course, for a, a, a frightening and slow and painful death. But look how beautiful these birds are. They're just incredible. This is a turkey flying over here, and they do fly, they can fly. Just to give you a little insight into going back to like these certified humane labels, this is how lax it all is. Okay, Butterball Turkey has an American Certified Humane label. American Certified Humane, it sounds so, you know, like they're just in paradise, right? Like this is how they're living. No, absolutely not. For American Certified Humane, there's no requirement for outdoor access. They're still de-beaked, still de -toed. Uh, they still can be bred to be so painfully overweight um, that they're breaking their bones and, and, and sometimes having to um, walk on their wings to get to w food and water. Um, and they go to the same horrifying death as all the other non-certified turkeys. So it means so very little. With my last few moments, um, I am going to switch gears and talk a little about sustainability and the environmental impacts. I think it's incredibly important uh, to put it in. So this is, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, this has been well documented for many decades that there is detrimental impact on the environment in many different areas. And I don't have time to go into all this, but of course, I think what we really need to focus on, I mean, we have to focus on it all, but climate change so, so prominently right now. And you know, as we know, uh, we have very little time to reverse this. The UN has these incredible uh, studies that they do all the time. We're getting them almost weekly, uh, totally, you know, just really asking the world, please, global switch to plant-based diet. You see it over and over again. There was just another one from the UN. The core message from these researchers and scientists, it was numerous reach, aww. We have to all, we have to all aww that. Cutest little. Get the cute little the efforts to keep climate change at acceptable levels will not be successful without a huge global reduction in meat consumption. And we see this again and again and again. 
This is really an awesome way to kind of to, to visualize it with this chart. We have three diets here. We've got veganism, vegetarianism, and the meat center diet, dairy and eggs, down below. The light green line is organic farming. The uh, dark green line is conventional. With most people, if you'd say, oh, you want to eat more eco, eat organic, right? That's what we all often think. Okay, so down here we're at this dark green line is the mo where, where most everybody is, the, the sad diet, the standard American diet. So let's say this someone says that's eating this regular diet, they say, hey, you know, I really want to eat more eco. I want to eat more green. I'm going to go organic. I'm going to eat organic meat and organic dairy. Okay, well, you go to this green line, this light green line here, and you've reduced your impact by 8%. Okay, that's something. But let's say the same person says, you know, I, I really want to eat more eco, I want to eat more green, I'm going to go vegan. And now we're not even talking about organic, just vegan. Ah, okay, now you're going down to that little dark green line at the top, and you have reduced your impact by 87%. Now we're talking, right? You want to take it all the way, go to organic, vegan, or at that tiny, tiny little green, green line at the top, you've reduced your impact by 94%. It just really shows you how it, meat, dairy, and eggs are the most impactful thing in our diet. When we're talking about uh, food and climate change, this is where we can have the most impact. I do have so much more in my book. I brought a few books here if you're interested. And I just want to take us back to the concept of speciesism. Please keep this in your thought process um, as we go through the night tonight mm -hmm. and you go through the rest of your lives. Um, how can we reduce speciesism in our own lives and in our communities? It's so important. And the animals, the animals want to live. It is the most basic and first rule of survival, live for a human or non-human. You know, animals love their lives. They want to spend another day in the sunshine, another day in the grass. We have no right to take that from them. Um, this is a justice issue, absolutely. Um, and, you know, killing a healthy animal for no reason is morally and logically inconsistent. So I'll leave you with this quote from my book. It is not our methods of animal agricultural practices that need to change. It is our unwillingness to let go of animal farming and animal products.